If you think back sort of 10 years, people didn't have the ability to film so, so much. So um, yeah, there would be a photograph and then that one photograph would be put in an album somewhere. So the memory would all be attached to this one moment where it was like the steel taken. Whereas obviously now people were filming, yeah, you've got the ability to buy a very uh, good quality camera built into your phone. So it's quite amazing really. Yeah, someone can come along and film you, that goes on the internet straight away from where they are. extremely important for us uh, and we've noticed that there's coming a lot more videos now because everybody is holding up their, their smartphone right now. My instrument um, was uh, des designed and developed um, in Switzerland. Um, it came around in the year 2000, after I believe like 25, maybe 30 years worth of research. The first time I saw someone playing the hang was my good friend Chris, actually. Uh, I saw him in a festival in Lincolnshire, in, in the Midlands of England. In the daytime, I saw him playing at African djembe. In that evening, I saw him playing uh, the hang drum for the first time. I played his for around about a, half a year to a year, and then he went off to Australia. And when he went off to Australia, I felt like something was missing. So at that point, I contacted the, the makers of the, uh, of the hang and asked them to sell me one. They invited me to their workshop, uh, but I had to wait like nearly a year and a half before I could actually go. So it's okay, I had a year and a half to save up the money for it. The first time I performed with the hang on the streets, it was a little bit by accident actually. I jumped off one train in Waterloo in South London and I had like maybe an hour to kill, like an hour's time before my friend arrived. And then I thought, okay, I'll play. So I took my instrument from the case and I just sitting there just gently, not like a, trying to draw attention to myself, but just playing quietly. So I sat there for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. And at the end of that time, I looked down and I had, yeah, my bus fare. I kind of uh, realized uh, maybe one year after playing the instruments, um, I mean, my life was already shaped around music. I was only working, um, you yeah, know, selling African percussion during the summer. And then during the winter, actually, I was working as a builder on a construction site. So during that first winter when I had this instrument, uh, my boss actually brought a hammer down on my finger. My finger broke. And I couldn't play music. I couldn't play the guitar. I couldn't play djembe for maybe four or five months. So during those four or five months, I really did some internal balancing and you know, I, I basically weighed up inside me what's more valuable, money or my passion? And at that point I quit working on the building site. Um, you know, I realised that my passion was worth more than money. Now that they older and the deeper in that St. Peter, won't you call me? Cause I can go I young my soul to the Campanista The people call me Papi Blues I am a musician in Arte Nieren I sing and I play guitar And I can't let it go A man is made of us I am now 76 But Ik heb gewerkt tot mijn 67 jaar. Ik werkte in de bouw. En dat, dat betaalde goed, maar op een zeker moment had ik de ziekte van de mensen van de bouw. Mijn knie was kapot en ik kon niet meer werken. Wat moest ik nu doen? Ik had maar een heel klein pensioen, omdat ik altijd zelfstandig geweest was. Dus ik moest iets doen voor iets bij te verdienen. Wat kon ik? Dat was muziek spelen. En ik pakte mijn gitaar en ik zette mij daar juist... Aan de achterkant van de beurs in Brussel. Maar dat was een ramp, want niemand keek naar mij op. Waarom niet? Omdat het niet goed was. De muziek dat ik maakte was niet goed. Maar ik liet mij niet ontmoedigen. En ik schaafde een beetje aan. En ik keek naar andere muzikanten die op straat spelen. En ik zei, tja, ik zal een keer dat proberen. Dat en uh, stil ik eens aan begonnen te verbeteren.
It started right here in this building um, at uh, the University of Musicology here and uh, we just sat at this first party and uh, very drunk and just all these empty bottles on the table and we just began to experiment with making chords and uh, yeah. Yeah, two hours later we came down and played Lemon Tree for, for the yeah. crowd and they went crazy. Yeah. So we just thought, we have to do this. We rearrange them for each song because if you have to play really fast between two notes, yeah. you have to yeah, put them definitely. right next to each other. Uh, it's not like a piano or a guitar, you don't have that range. Like if you have to go from here to there, you're gonna break your teeth. Yeah. So they have to be close. We thought about it for a long time, but we didn't really dare doing it. Because uh, it's it's quite a move to make. And we are yeah. we all study musicology and we are we consider ourselves serious musicians, but we had to try it, and we did, and it was a great success, and we made quite a lot of money, so we stuck to it <laughs> after that. You had nooit heel veel geld verdiend met op straat te spelen, hè? Dus is hè? De mensen gaan geen biljet van 100 euro even, hè? En laat ons zeggen. Maar erkenning heb je dan zeker, hè? Zitten in de morning sun en er is het meer. De politie wordt dan langzaam strenger en soms heb ik de indruk dat ze liever zouden hebben dat er niet meer op straat gespeeld wordt. Maar zolang dat ik mag spelen op straat, doe ik het op straat. Misschien zal dat later wel komen dat het niet meer gaat, hè? Wie weet, de toekomst is onzeker, hè? De mensen worden dan langzaam. Meer, uh, ja. er is veel jaloezie, hè. Zo toe van de mensen die uh, een beetje uh, aan lager wal zijn, die zijn dikwijls jaloers op mij, hoor. Omdat ik, ik probeer wel te geven. Ik geef al allemaal niets. Ik geef misschien op, op, uh, op een dag zou ik misschien wel 20 tot 30 euro geven aan de mensen. Een keer 5 euro, een keer 2 euro. It all depends on the police, yeah. actually. The police is uh, a nemesis. Yeah. And the bottle collectors. We have to watch after those. They yeah. are after our instruments all the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we got stopped in, 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 in uh, Barcelona and the police came and stopped us and, and took our bottles. Yeah. Uh, and wanted to give us a huge fine, but they finally uh, agreed to just take our instruments, which are bottles. Yeah. So we went out and bought some new bottles and then we played the next day again. Yeah, we just bought uh, like 55 Leffe beers and just drank it. Yeah, <laughs> it was, that was quite a hard night, but we got through it. Yeah. Inside London, if I play in the streets, I'll get uh, fine after fine and I get arrested. Get my stuff taken away from me and just generally looked down upon. So I take it upon myself to travel around Europe uh, and the rest of the world uh, to try and find nice places to perform in public where I don't need to have a license. Um, where I can just basically play in a sort of, uh, can I put it, in a kind of um, a loose environment. The things that I leave behind when I travel, obviously my family. Um, I know that yeah, my parents are behind me 150% in what I'm doing. Uh, they're very proud of what I'm up to. It seems that I've carved my own path, you could say. And I'm definitely on my own journey. <laughs> One of the big things I did find when I started traveling so much is uh, I go away for six months, I come back, and my best friends, uh, they've done almost like nothing different. You know, they've been working the same job maybe five days a week. Uh, whereas in that time, I've been to X amount of countries, uh, slept in X amount of different places, and uh, it's interesting.
I don't think I'll ever stop playing in the streets, um, but for sure I'm beginning to play in the streets a little bit less these days because I'm having so many people book me for other events, like uh, corporate events, weddings and other shows, which is nice because it means when I go to play on the streets I'm playing for my love, not just for money. Uh, onlangs heb ik uh, uitgenodigd geweest in de studio van Amsterdam, in uh, de Wereld Draait Door. En well, ik heb dat nu op televisie opgenomen. En uh, dat heeft mij toch een kick. Dat geeft mij iets voor mij dat te zien zitten. Giel, die, uh, enfin, die, die dat verzorgt, die, die was eraan begonnen. Hij had iets uh, op poten gezet voor muzikanten die op latere leeftijd beginnen spelen. Op straat, meestal. En uh, hij had van mij gezien op, op YouTube. Hij heeft publiekelijk in zijn, uh, in zijn in dingen gezegd, wij doen een oproep. Kunt u me niet zeggen waar Papi Blues woont, hoe dat ik hem kan bereiken? En uh, die mensen heeft massaal uh, inlichtingen gekregen. We've been getting jobs all the time, but during the winter time there's no jobs. It's very bad. And when, when we don't have any jobs, we just hit the streets. And then the jobs come, uh, keep coming again. So, no matter what, no matter how famous we get, I think we're still going to go to the streets because it's our best way to promote ourselves. Yeah, definitely. The kind of gigs we play are very, very different. We played on um, like a stage which is one square foot and we played on a stage, uh, like huge stages on, on festivals, so yeah. you do everything uh, and it's it's all equally fun but it's just different. But we get this really strange job sometimes and we also played like on the Danish festival Scannable, we, uh, we played for Snoop Dogg at backstage some, yeah, somewhere, it's just really, really fun and, and really strange yeah. to, to get to play these kind of concerts. But, yeah. So there's a lot of different experiences <laughs> all the time. I think one of the big uh, things over the last few years has been the fact that everybody's got their iPhones. Um, there I am sitting on the street and straight away somebody pulls up the camera and they've lost, they're no longer looking at me, they're looking at the camera. They're actually looking at this little thing here, they're actually focusing the camera here and on the face sometimes there's no emotion. You know, it's like is it good, is it bad? You don't know. But then you just see them walk away like this. Which is nice in a way, because they, they obviously see something that they, they want to take with them, they see something that's like uh, inspiring in some way. I've actually had it before as well, where somebody, I was uh, yeah, playing my music in the street and somebody asked me if they could buy my music online. They actually accessed I, uh, iTunes from their phone, downloaded my music directly to their phone, and they showed me. And that's the first time I've ever seen my music actually downloaded directly to a handset. Yeah. So it's cool, it's almost like I've got like a, the computer's working for me these days. It's quite nice. Mensen zetten me nu veel, u weet het misschien ook wel, op YouTube. Dat is, ze pakken een, uh, een, een camera en ze filmen mij en ze zetten op YouTube. Ik sta misschien wel een andere keer op YouTube. Ja, natuurlijk, ik kan er niet optimaal gebruik van maken. Hè. Omdat, om, ik ken, ja, oudere mensen die, die, heb, die hebben niet zo graag die moderne techniek, omdat ze er niets van begrijpen. Ik heb een gsm, maar kan er misschien maar... Uh, een onderste van gebruiken. Dus wat ik zeg tegen de mensen, ik verkoop geen cd's, maar u kunt me zien, mij zien op, uh, op YouTube.
I've been booked at various different weddings and different events through people seeing my videos on YouTube. So it is quite beneficial in many ways, the fact that um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sitting here right now, but I don't know how many people uh, maybe on the internet listen to my music right now or watching my videos right now. So I think that it's, it's quite good. I can be in many places at the same time. You know, and, and in that way, it's good because I haven't had to look for a record deal. I haven't had to look for radio play. I haven't had to look, well, I need one now, but I haven't had to look for a manager who can you know, place me in different places, um, you know, like product placing. And I've been very free to just live my life and just uh, to be the way I am, which I think is quite important these days. We played this one song by a, a Danish um, singer called uh, Medina. Nothing left for me to say. There's no more wicked games to play. And uh, and we and we played this song on the streets and we were like, mm, we didn't it, really like it. And no, we didn't like the way we yeah, played we, it. Yeah, we we liked the song, but uh, yeah, but it was a quite boring uh, arrangement on the bottles. And then we just asked, uh, should we throw it out or, or what? And then um, one day you called me and just uh, something went crazy on the internet. I got a call from a, from a, a huge uh, TV network. He said, uh, we want to hire you for this uh, uh, show we're having because we just saw you. And I was like, saw us, <laughs> saw us where? where? Like, don't you know there's a huge thing going around Facebook right now with you guys <laughs> because of this girl Medina. She, uh, she posted us on her wall on Facebook and suddenly we had uh, 25,000 hits in one night on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. And that's the reason why we're doing shows around Europe now. And we went twice to Hong Kong uh, this summer and this winter because of a video they saw of us on YouTube. So it's, it's extremely important for us. Uh, and we've noticed that there's coming a lot more videos now because everybody is holding up their, their smartphone right now. We started to make videos ourselves, but actually the chances of breaking through with a video is still better when it's a random video, because if it's too well-made, if yeah. it's too produced, then people won't buy it. I've got one video now that's had over, uh, well over 2 million hits, and unfortunately for the first uh, 1.8 million hits at least, my name wasn't attached to the video. So quite handy in the fact that everyone's seeing what I do and yeah, it gets out there. A little bit frustrating in the, in the fact that my name hasn't been attached to it and there's no credit due basically. I mean if you imagine that like, anybody who's a composer has their piece of music used and then that piece of mu uh, that, um, that video gets watched 2 million times, they're going to earn royalties. Unfortunately I was sat in the street at that time and someone just filmed me and they didn't even ask what the name of the instrument was, who I was, they just uploaded it to the internet. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, the whole sort of fame and fame and fortune is interesting. I'd say there's more fame than fortune. <laughs> you know? It's a different way to to interact these days because it's not just what you do when you're performing live. It's also uh, it's it, it takes some work actually to keep your fans interested all the time. And you have to post videos yourself constantly and, uh, and add material. My bones were wrapped around you. My skin was right in front of you. Natuurlijk is de, de wereld is enorm veranderd. Hè. Dat is waar. Laat ons zeggen dat, we, dat ik uit de boot val. Hè. Dat is wel de, de goede uitdrukking daarvoor. Kan niet mee. Ik kan niet mee, zeggen ze bij ons. <laughs> to keep it 